Well, it has been a tricky week for the Labour Party. Suspending one MP over anti-Semitism is bad enough, but having Ken Livingstone, a leading light of the national executive, pilloried by the press and fellow party members, and then suspended in the week before the local elections could well be disastrous. But surely everyone has the right to criticise policies, people and countries we disagree with, provided what we say does not incite racial or religious hatred or violence. Now, lots of people across the world have profoundly disagreed with Israel's policies and actions over the years, especially towards Palestine or the expansion of its settlements. It doesn't mean they don't think that Israel shouldn't exist at all. Is anti-Zionism anti-Semitic? Angela Epstein, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Angela, um, this political idea of Zionism and, and, and the homeland, I think we've got our heads around that. <laughs> But if somebody were to say, and we're going to navigate our way through this, I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating. If, if someone were to say, I believe in a multi-ethnic, one-state solution in that part of the world, therefore Israel as such does not have a right to exist. Is that anti-Semitic? Well, Israel is the Jewish homeland, so to delegitimize the Jewish homeland is to say the Jews, and remember, they're not just Israelis, they're Jews from all over the world, haven't a right to be there. And we've all sort of bought into this week the grotesque references to the Holocaust, the final solution that Ken Livingstone, a rabid anti-Semite, has made, you know, and the, and the Nazis were... A rabid anti-Semite? Yes, and the Nazis were... Allow yeah. me to finish. The Nazis were, were genocidal murderers who slaughtered millions of Jews. And to even bring that or nod your head towards that yeah. in, the, in the pursuit of circumspect political discourse is absolutely disgraceful. That statement, I believe, in a multi-ethnic one-state solution, therefore Israel as such does not have a right to exist. So that is anti-Semitic. It is because you're saying that the Jews do not have a right to their, their homeland. And you can't, and to say, as, as, as the MP very lamentably said about Israel, no. about um, Jews in Israel being transported no, sure. to America. No, sure. Again, no. this, this language of the Third Reich, how can it not connote references of anti Semitism and prejudice? Look, everybody has a right to criticize every government on the planet. No government should be immune to criticism, including Israel. There are Jews who criticize Israel, absolutely. But when that spills over into this unreconstructed, bitter invective, so disproportionate, and especially when compared to criticism of other countries with lamentable human rights records, mm -hmm. you have to question, is anti-Zionism simply a Trojan horse for anti-Semitism? Right. And why don't they like that? Let me ask one more. And I, listen, listen, we've got, we've got plenty of time. <laughs> it's all right. Um, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, he wanted to pass this law uh, saying Israel is the nation state of one people only, the Jewish people and of no other people. And if any other country in the world said that, people would be jumping up and down saying that's racist. Is that racist? No, it, I don't think it is racist. He's, he's, he's... <laughs> you see, this is, this is the problem. If we, let, let's, let's, sorry, I'm sorry, but if you'd allow me the courtesy of, of finishing, let's spool back to the question. Is it anti-Semitic to be anti-Zionism? Is, anti is, it, is it a form of anti-Semitism? You have a right to criticise other governments and what governments do or say. But, well, but let, I let, beg your pardon. Well, we'll spread it out. I, I, I just want to establish parameters here and then well, we'll... Can we and then I'll, wait, no, we can in a minute. Let, let Angela answer. And then uh, I might very well come to, uh, to you, Raza. Uh, and then we've got lots of other people on this side as well, and on this side, finish your answer. Andrew. Let me let me just say, you know, before the establishment of the state, the Arabs were uh, there was a partition plan where the Arabs were offered their own state alongside the Jewish state, and that was unilaterally rejected. And over over subsequent wars, in in a, yes, it was, and in in in, in subsequent wars. Israel gained territory either out of okay. a defensive moves. It, there was an opportunity before the foundation of the state to live side by side. Let's take and this it. Is, this is how it's come to this. Let's take it uh, side by side or separately, okay? But let, let's take it to. There are lots of Israeli Arabs that do well living on the Let's take it to this week's. <laughs> this week. Let me take. Oh, excuse me, everyone. Let me take it to this week's debate. I will come to you uh, in a second, Raza. Let me come to Moshe uh, Machova first from King's College London, who is, uh, I suppose, a. Uh, Jewish dissident, Israeli dissident. Israeli dissident. Yeah. When people, when people say, for example, I saw a tweet this week saying, the Israeli government are as bad as the Nazis. I saw somebody tweeting that this week. Is that anti-Semitic? No, it is a false statement. It is a hyperbole. It is unnecessarily provocative, but anti-Semitic it isn't. It is not trying to 
create hate or to express hate or uh, to, to, ju to, to Jews as such. How can that not be trying to create because, hate? Because it is, it is a political statement about the state, a state of Israel, uh, which is a, a, a political entity. It's calculated But if you don't allow uh, criticism and uh, deconstruction and uh, refutation of Zionism, then you are not able to understand the policies that we are allowed to criticize, for example, the illegal settlement. What are they? They are colonization. They are an, an act of... So you believe this stops debate? It, it, it stops mm. understanding because, because the root cause of the colonization of the West Bank is the fact that Zionism from its very beginning was a movement not of ho creating a homeland anywhere, but of colonizing a country inhabited by another people in order to make... Let, let me ask you uh, one more, let me ask you one uh, more question. Of Lewis the Elman in a Jewish second. Religion. Okay, let me ask you one more question. When people talk, and we've heard talk this week, and we heard talk in previous weeks from the president of the NUS, and from Ken Livingston referring to the Israeli lobby, she's referred to the Zionist media. Now this very much uh, makes a lot of people extremely uncomfortable. It relates back to the Ford Tsarist uh, document, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which was all about a Jewish worldwide conspiracy. Yep. Is the phrase uh, Zionist controlled media anti-Semitic? No, it is false and it is again a hyperbole and uh, it may be offensive especially to Zionists. <laughs> but uh, uh, Anti-Semitic it isn't. It is a statement about the political t t taint, the political twist of certain papers. For example, I read The Guardian. The Guardian, <laughs> uh, uh, one of, one of uh, its main editors is uh, uh, Jonathan Friedland, who is a Zionist propagandist. Yes. So, Zionist uh, propagandist. So, uh, Louise Elman, MP. Uh, Louise Elman, MP. I think, I think MP. Jonathan Friedland would be um, pretty bemused to, to hear that description of him. The, the problem isn't about criticising the policies of the government of Israel. That's perfectly legitimate. But is that phrase Zionist but, media? But is that, that anti-Semitic? I, I think it is, because what it's doing is taking the malign characteristics that anti-Semites attribute to Jews, being too rich, manipulative, involved in conspiracies, and then transferring that to Zionism, uh, Jewish self-determination. That is anti-Semitic, and that Rubbish. is where you move. And that is where people uh, move please. from well, legitimate. Let, that is where finish. people move from legitimate criticism of a country to something much deeper. And it's about singling out Israel amongst all the countries of the world no. as the only country that doesn't have any legitimacy to exist, not about a policy, but about its existence. So I think there's, there's, there is something very odd about that and by, about the people who single out Israel amongst everything in the world, looking at the turmoil, the conflict in the world, and say that is the only country that doesn't have a justified existence. I find something deeply disturbing. Pakistan. <laughs> Well, the, the Raza, Raza, Raza Nadim, a professor, don't worry. Um, uh, it's kind of, you can apply the Nick Griffin test to this, Raza, can't you? Some of the comments we've heard from Naz Shah, from the president of the NUS, from Ken Livingston, if they came from the lips of Nick Griffin, uh, the former leader of the British National Party, most right-minded people would think that those comments were vile. That surely is... Raza first, that surely is the case. Hey, it's the thing is, uh, it is a racist with previous forms. So it's, it's, you can't really say that Nasha or Malia Bouati are like them. And a couple of things, though, we need to come back but to... But if you use the word solution, if you use the word transportation... Hang on, a couple of things. First but of all, if somebody that, says they're that, not a racist, can I that doesn't point? give them carte blanche. So, okay, hang on, hang on. Wait, everybody, now we are going to hear from... I think what Rather. I find annoying is, I think Moshe has really actually touched upon the topic, that it's actually, it's, anti-Semitism is a real issue, but it's made light of by saying anyone that criticizes Israel, no, it's nothing to do with occupation, nothing to do with you dropping white phosphorus on children, nothing to do with That's settlements, true. no, but actually, and what it's to do that with that is that you just you hate Jews, and that, and that, and that, and that is... Stop it, stop it. Oh, Angela, 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 wait, 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 wait. excuse me, we will, uh, I'm trying to make this as civilized as possible, I've been doing television and radio debates on this issue for 28 years, and it's never uh, particularly civilized. I want to have a new first. <laughs> but the, the, the point. Some I, hope, but let's let's uh, let's persevere. Raza Nadim. Yes. 
the thing is also, Nikki, it's important about the context in which this debate is taking place. This debate about racism and anti-Semitism isn't taking place because a Tory MP uh, bought a Nazi outfit for his aid to wear. It's not, we're not talking about racism because um, Boris Johnson referred to African leaders as watermelon smiles. We're not talking about it for those reasons. It is part of a concerted effort to undermine Jeremy Corbyn's leadership and say those that support him are full of John later Lansman. anti -Semite. John Lansman. And that's John Lansman, the, the, the chair, the head of Momentum, mm -hmm. which is the Jeremy Corbyn pressure group, support group, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them, he tweeted yesterday, mm -hmm. a period of silence from Ken Livingston is overdue, especially on anti-Semitism, racism and Zionism. Does that not tell you? because he's such a big supporter of Jeremy Corbyn, no, because, that it's nothing to do with the campaign no, no, against Jeremy Corbyn. No, no, what it tells Corbyn. me is, is that it's, he's basically finding the media pressure too much to take. Because, look, to call Ken Livingston a rabid anti-Semite, it's just throwing that word around. I mean, look at Ken Livingston's oh, record. Yeah, it is. You, can't, it, you, can't just call him anti, you can't call him an anti-Semite. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And you can't talk about phosphorus. Roger, right, right, OK. Yes, yes, Ra no, no, Rabbi, Rabbi Ben, did. Did. No, no, turn in a second. Professor, in a second. No. Rabbi Benji. Yes, I think that when people who obsess with anti-Israel agenda, and it's that emotional language that you get from one side of the debate that likes to throw out accusations. What, settlements? With, one moment, please. <laughs> when you have a fixated attitude that sees Israel as the whole, the anti of everything that's good in the world, it does become synonymous with anti-Zionism. There are tens of thousands of people being killed to the, in the northern border of Israel. Where are the demonstrations? Where is the anger at humanity being wiped out on a weekly basis when America accidentally kills innocents and over the years in Afghanistan and other places? The oh, world, there's the, there's the BBC, been no demos on that. The BBC yeah, is quiet, then the media is quiet. When it comes to Israel, all of a sudden you have this no. obsession, the, 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 the vociferous, the violence, the, the passionate anger that is beyond rational conversations, and, you do, and it does become synonymous with anti-Semitism. We really do feel that in our community. No. Okay, but Tony, our, our Tony, community. Tony, it's beyond... Yeah, wait, the let me phrase this. Let me phrase this to Tony Greenstein, community. who is a, a, a veteran uh, campaigner on this, Jews for boycotting Israeli goods. Is this beyond rational? this hatred of Israel that we hear, no, which course, spills into anti-Semitism? No, no, of course not. I'm Jewish. I was born in this country. My homeland is in Britain. It's not in Israel. What is outrageous is that Palestinian friends of mine who are born in Israel, who grew up there, cannot return there, and I, who have never been born there, have the right to go to Israel. It's not about anti-Semitism. <laughs> You get, it's difficult to justify locking up 12-year-old Palestinian children exactly. and beating them up. It's you difficult that 93% of Israel is Jewish land which Arabs cannot ascertain. It's difficult to justify when you're pregnant, you go into a ward, if you're Jewish you can have a ward with where there are no Arabs in it. That, to that's me, is exactly racism. Not the not evil okay, I'm going to come to Joy. Wait, that's wait. That's uh, not Tony, exactly. Tony, I'm going to come to Joy in a minute, but I want to ask you one question. Yes. Does the state of Israel have a right to exist? There's no state has a right to exist because states aren't human beings. The Israel or Palestine has the right to exist as a state of its own citizens, not as a state of Jewish people Joy. wherever they live. Joy. Joy Wolf. Don't worry, we've got time. Professor Maccabee is rewriting history. There is absolutely no doubt that at the beginning, when there was an opportunity for two states alongside each other, it could have happened and should have happened. And what happened was that there was a war launched and Israel won some land. When Israel has tried to give back land, tried to give back land to Gaza, wouldn't take it back. Tried to... No. 1967, Egypt said to Gaza. It is not rubbish, what and what is, is rubbish is no, white phosphorus on children. OK, let, 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 wait, wait, everybody be quiet for one second. I want to say something to you. We have Tony... No, you Tony, Joy, Joy, Tony, be quiet, please, everybody, for one second. I want to say one thing to you now. We are inevitably, I guess, straying into the politics of the Middle East. I want everybody to, and it's, it's, a, it's a natural and understandable corollary of our conversation and of our debate, but I want to, as much as possible, if we could, focus on this area between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism yep. and try, if we can, mm -hmm. to establish where something and when something becomes anti-Semitic. Right. If that's okay, everyone, yeah, that, that would be great. That's Joy. Fine. I would like to carry on with that because what I can't understand is this. There are, there are conflicts throughout the world 
and somehow the spotlight is always on Israel. Now, the, you have to ask the question, why is the spotlight always on Israel? Is it because it's the Jewish state, which is what I believe? Israel isn't perfect. Israel does a lot of things wrong. We've got a lot of enemies, but also we do a lot for the world. Why is it that a group of doctors wanted to have Israel out of the World Health Organization when Israel has done so much in research? They and it, it, it's absolutely crazy. Because they collaborate doctors. Which, I bet South Africa, yeah, apartheid we, state, offered a lot Professor as well. Professor Maccabee and Tony Greenstein are probably the most well-known anti-Israel people, Jewish people in this country. So we're, we're up against a wall here. But we have to be That's factual about the truth. Different and the truth the is, there is no reason why Jews and Palestinians and Arabs cannot and do live alongside each other in Israel apartheid. and live very well and if Israeli you ask apartheid. if you there is no such thing as Israeli apartheid Israel is the absolute oh, the perfect. opposite of apartheid is that, you give me one joy, example of is that um, and again I'm trying to forget is the phrase Israeli apartheid <laughs> let, is let that, me ask you Andrew is that anti-semitic Yes, of course it's anti-Semitic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 can I just say, first of all, gentlemen, I mean, I, I, you know, support Nikki, and we're trying to have a civilised debate here, and the very fact that you're shouting down anything that connotes support of Israel and the Jewish state says something about the weakness of your argument. Well, you and by the way, could I, also, yeah. could I also say, as a, my friend, as a fellow Jew, Hitler would have not distinguished between you and me. You should also remember that. But the point about he would not, you would have been on the trains with everybody else, regardless of your views. Ken, now, Livingston, just, Ken Livingston was, uh, was criticised for bringing Hitler into the conversation I'm Jewish. This week. I can do, I, yes, but unlike, <laughs> exactly. but unlike Ken Livingstone, I would have been a target for Hitler. Ken Livingstone wouldn't have been. Could I just make the point about Zionism? The problem with Zionism now, to, to, to bring the debate this back to the original question, yeah. to bring the debate, well, behave maturely, to bring oh, the debate back to the original Semite. question, mm -hmm. the problem now is that Zionism and Zionist, Zionist has become a byword for Jew. So no, Jewish Jews... No, it has Jewish, well, student, Jewish students on campus. I'm sure on occasion it can do, and on other occasions it, 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 it doesn't. Can, can, can uh, can Angela Epstein finished. Can can professor, professor, professor you can make a statement in one can second. Make, you can. A step, you can. A step, you can, you can one, say something in one second. Yeah. And we're just going to let Angela yeah. finish, yeah. and then, then we're going to come over to you, and I'm going to let you say it, Professor. Okay, so as many Jewish students I know, including my own children, who experience it on campus, uh, have been called Zio, which has become a byword, a derogatory byword for Jew. Now, uh, the, NUS, the, the, new, the newly elected NUS president has, has described Birmingham University, for example, as a absolutely disgracefully as a Zionist outpost. Why? Why? Well, if you leave me an opportunity, I'll explain to you. Um, okay. Yeah. Come, come. Okay, very quickly, very quickly. Come very to quickly. your closing remarks. Okay, very quickly. I, it's awful that I have to be bullied into that, but, but very well, quickly. The fact is that Birmingham University has attracted an awful lot of Jewish students. And that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. Just as Glaswegians may want to be with Glaswegians, Jewish students might want to be with Jewish students. To call them Zionist activists and a Zionist outpost, how can that expression of Zionism Zionism not be anti-Semitism. Professor, how can that not be anti-Semitism, Professor Macho? I, I, want, I want to take a step towards the other side. I can understand their rage. Zionist Jews have made Zionism as part of their Jewish identity. So it is a, as though it is a surrogate religion. So when Zionism is attacked, they feel that their Jewishness is attacked. Mm. But non-Zionist Jews Anti-Zionists Jews don't feel that uh, it, it, it has anything to do with their Jewish identity. So when they say... But you respect that, those who do. Well, I, I, I understand them. Um, respect is another matter. Yeah. Depends on what they do. What they think, I respect every thought. But what they do is very, is very questionable, especially when it involves colonization of land. Do you, do you accept the it, point that has been made, Professor, that there are a lot worse excesses and uh, atrocities by other states across C the world C who disproportionately not. Are, not, uh, are not focused C on. C uh, certainly not. There are two points. Israel is not the only settler state in the world, but it's the only one that is still active and the, its colonization is still ongoing. In the United States, in Australia, the natives have been completely marginalized, in some places but, exterminated. Yeah. They have been, that, they have been ethnically cleansed. In the case of Israel-Palestine, colonization is ongoing. Secondly, secondly there are mm, okay. other states who are you know, in the same position. For example, Pakistan, another state founded on religion, uh, which is a danger to the world, 
two, like two of them nuclear armed states which are a danger to their surrounding and North a danger Korea to the as well. world. Okay. No, no, I want to come to the audience, so gather your thoughts. I want quick comments from the audience, but Louise Elman, I have to give the right of reply on that because some very strong things were said there by the professor. What, 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 we, what we've just heard is absolute distortion. There is a bitter conflict between Jewish and, and Palestinian nationalism, both legitimate concepts. It can only be resolved by a political solution that colonized. gives a Palestinian oh, state please, let, let alongside finish. Israel. But what has been happening is that there have been wars. Israel has fought defensive wars, and as a result of that, and as a result of that, did end up occupying land that it did not have previously. Now, when a peace treaty was reached with Egypt, Israel withdrew from the whole of the Sinai. Israel then withdrew from the whole of Gaza. And unfortunately, instead of that being followed by peace, that was followed by Hamas. And to call Israel an apartheid state, again, is a slur, and it goes back to the point of singling Israel out. A third of Israel's well, citizens are non-Jewish. They're Arab, they're Muslims. Do anti the Supreme Court judge sent the last Israeli president to jail. Israel is not an apartheid state. Yes, there are problems. Yes, the whole issue of settlements and expansion of land is serious, has to be resolved by discussion. And when people talk about this bitter dispute, it's all too common to sing out Israel as being solely responsible for not being a solution. What about the Palestinians too? No one's done it all right and no one's done it I all wrong. The, the two peoples have to come I'll together and negotiate a solution and maligning Israel as being solely responsible again is an example of singling Israel the only Jewish state out amongst yeah, no, all nations. Okay, uh, audience, <laughs> audience, very quick comments uh, if, you, if you would, sort of a uh, little pithy comments. Hello, good morning, what would you like to say? I think people that are uh, worried about the actions of the Israeli state aren't just worried about Israel, they're, they're concerned about other social and political issues too. Even in our country they're concerned about, you know, uh, junior doctors and things like that. I don't mm. think we should think it's all about Israel all the time. You know, we're worried about all issues, so don't focus too much. We're thinking about other countries as well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and gentlemen there in the black top. Yes, I'm sure most sane people would agree that Israel does have a right to exist. It also has a right to defend its borders, but nevertheless, at the same token, I think Palestine has got a, a right to exist as well, and hopefully, as Obama said, hopefully this can come about where two states can live in harmony. It might take some time, but you've got to be optimistic. But I would say this, that just to condemn Israel, because it's a Jewish state, as far as I'm concerned, well, that is anti-Semite. Also, oh, also, yeah. and finally... Raza, you're, you're, you're next on the list. Yeah. Don't worry. La a lady beside you, you wanted to say something. Oh, yes. Uh, interesting the that the professor said about um, Jews who are not Zionist. I'm not particularly either. Um, I do believe that if we had true social justice in every single country, we wouldn't need Israel. Mm. Um, but my point is, uh, not being particularly Zionist, having no connection particularly to Israel, I fail to understand why so many British and European people do seem to have such an uncanny connection to the Middle East. Yeah. And so much so that they are prepared yeah. to go out and malign Israel on every single opportunity when not quite so many numbers malign, say, China and Tibet or India and Kashmir. I've started with the ladies. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, listen, it's audience Britain time. It's, I'll problem. be with you. So, don't worry. Don't look at me like that. For goodness sake, <laughs> I will be with That's you. That's just my face. <laughs> I know. Yeah, a final comment from the audience for now. Yeah, Hi, uh, good point, morning. Uh, good morning. My point is just that, like Professor at the front said, that how Pakistan is also state based. Uh, you know, it was made on religious basis. So anti-Zionism is, you know, being against the state. So if saying that if you're against the state of Pakistan, then that does make you Islamophobe as well. Because if you're against the state of Israel, if that makes you anti-Semitic, then being against the state of Pakistan would make you an Islamophobe. So exactly. <laughs> exactly. Raza Nadeem, let me ask you a couple of questions. Okay. I know you've got lots of points to make. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Um, uh, Mehdi Hassan, in 2012, the well-known Muslim commentator, mm. wrote uh, a, a very interesting article. People, lots of people said it was a very brave article at the time. Said that conspiracy theories and anti-Semitism was uh, rife in the Muslim community, and uh, and coming from him, this was very interesting. He said that anti-Semitism was uh, uh, the Muslim community's dirty little secret. I know which article. Is he right? 
No, I don't think it's our dirty little secret. The thing is, you find bigots sadly. Why did he say it? Well, the thing is, it's, he felt the need to write the article. You've got to ask him why he did that. I mean, I, I don't think he documents the exact reason why. But I want to come back to a couple of points regarding anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism. What I've seen in the, in, the, in the debate often is very poor whataboutery about in terms of, oh, you only talk about Israel, as if we never talk about Bashar al-Assad, what he's doing to others, or about other human rights abuses. But also, I, I agree with Louise Elman on one thing, and that is... Israel does want peace. It's just that we're spelling it wrong. They want a piece of this and they want a piece of that. That's oh, what goodness. <laughs> one more. Goodness Tony, fight. one more. Listen, one more. Um, I've got to say, at the moment, you're not allowed a platform by the, by the NUS due to various issues with your group relating to uh, uh, anti-Zionism. Uh, and a parliamentary inquiry into anti-Zionism in 2006, so, and you, you weren't around then, but this is, this is prior to you, said uh, your organisation published material pre promoting the idea of a worldwide Zionist conspiracy information which originally came from a Holocaust denial website. Have your organization, MPAC, have you cleaned up your act? Well, there's a couple of things. First, on that, I'll, I'll answer that. But what I found is when it comes to defending the indefensible, which often comes with Israel's advocates, is they have to go on the offensive and accuse others of being anti-Semitic rather than argue the, the Holocaust argument. denial website. Now, hang, hang on, no, no. The thing is this. Now, regarding those things, I would recommend people go on the MPAC UK website to look at some of the rebuttals to these smears. It may have been someone shared an image that another blog also used. So they're very spurious things. But what I found is, as an activist on the Palestinian issue, especially as a Muslim one, I'm always told it's nothing to do with abuse of other human beings, it's just because I hate Jews. And that is a caricature, and it's, and it's wrong, and it stops having an adult conversation about Israel occupying Palestine. Rabbi Benji. Let me ask, ask you a question to see how you would deal with this one. The very first time I appeared on this show, social media comments afterwards attacked me because of the policies of the State of Israel. Okay, being anti-Semitic is not popular these days, so they had to go at me in a different way. Have intact, how can I claim to want a shared humanity? How can I claim to want all people to get on together? So you how can I say that? That's, that's, you can't, so hang on, so you're saying they disagreed with you? But they could use because... Israel, but they used Israel to have a go at me. No, hang on, no, they, they, no, no because, because you support Israel. Israel, you defend Israel. But I wasn't understand speaking that. about Israel on that's the day, yet I, I was attacked because I rep I'm a Jew, I'm a religious Jew, I... Now, as a religious Jew, the Bible is something that's important to me. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, God sent to Abraham to go. The Christians have that, and the Quran also mentions Israel for the Jewish you people. You should be afraid of the Christian Zionists, the evangelicals, That's and what they want to do. Why the your supporters are anti-Semites. That's the reality. The far right in Europe, like Strack, has just been got what? the highest percentage in Austrian poll. He supports Israel, but he hates Jews. That's the reality. But I'm asking, why was I attacked? Why was because Le Pen, of the policies why was Le Pen of Israel? Support Israel, a defender of the Zionism. Nick Griffin, he supports Israel, more but he opposes. He opposes. Jews. More That's why the reality. The whole the right for the Jews to have a homeland. Alongside. Because the Jews are members of every nation, not what, just one nation. We're not a nation. We're a religion. Yes, we are a That's nation. That's different. The nation of Israel. Rubbish. Absolute no. rubbish. Some Joy. Of the anti might Joy. Say we're a whole nation. The nation of Israel. Pick up. Pick up that point. Well, indeed, the nation of Israel. It is the one Jewish state in the world. It is the one state that is attacked by the Human Rights Council. The Human Rights Council has just done something utterly ridiculous. It doesn't have resolutions against any other country, but recently it's had a resolution about the way Israel treats its women. Now, as far as Israel is concerned, and women, they have, there is no better place in the Middle East for women than Israel. And some of the things that have been said Please. are so offensive. Israel is not a settler state, it is not an apartheid state. It is a melting pot. Israel is a state that was started off as a settler state. Israel was given legitimacy by the United Nations and was happy to go alongside. You can be in Israel, you can be next to an Arab village and a Jewish village. And half of them are unrecognized. Joy, let me. For goodness sake, for goodness sake, stop talking utter rubbish. Joy, can I ask you, Tony? Tony, hang on. Wait, 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 Joy, Tony, let me, put, let me put the point actually that I put to Angela, who will have another chance, don't worry, um, <laughs> that I put to Angela at the beginning, this Benjamin Netanyahu uh, clause, he wanted to pass I this totally law. I disagree with that. Right. And I think let me remind people, if people have just, have just set, set, um, switched on, he said the nation, it should be the nation state of one people only, the Jewish people and of no other people. Do you realise that is hugely counterproductive? It is terrible and I oppose it 100% and pretty well every Israeli will oppose it and every decent Jew will oppose it. It didn't go into law. Every decent Jew will oppose it. 
course it is. It's, it's a Jewish state, state with over one million Arabs who want to stay there. Yeah. And when there was you a possibility... With the Can I just finish one point? Right that's to that's no wait, and everyone, let, let everyone be quiet. I want it's, to... Wait, no, Joy. Sorry. Joy, it's too... Too screamy at the Daphne. moment. And, jo and Tony, you're, you're, I feel like the Speaker in the House of Commons well, I here. I will calm. Daphne, I'm going to come to you in a second. Uh, I, I think will calm down completely well, and I will, okay, say, okay. I will just say one thing. The Israeli Arabs, when there was a possibility of transfer of land, when in 2000 they were offered uh, for a solution 97% of the land, the Israeli Arabs queued up in the consulate to get their Israeli passport, ask any Israeli Arab if they prefer to live in Israel or they prefer to live in the state of Palestine or elsewhere, and you will what find that they yeah, want exactly. to, to no live in Israel. It's the Palestinian Authority as yet is that, that is Daphne? the state that there should be. Yep. Daphne, thank you very much. Daphne, is that, uh, you're, you're Jewish. Yeah. You're Jewish. I am, yeah. well, I'm an atheist Jew, an atheist and I'm an Israeli, right. and okay. I'm an anti-Zionist. Okay, let's uh, okay. Is, this. Is, um, is anti-Zionism, can it stray into anti-Semitism? Well, the two are not mutually exclusive, but these are two very different things. And there's no connection between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. One can opt to be an anti-Semite and to, and to add anti-Zionism to their basket, but that's their problem. What I'm saying is, the question of Zionism in Israel is a question of regime. And we have a right to resent the very regime of Israel, not just any specific politics, but the idea of a Jewish state as such, which I find abhorrent. This is akin to a British person wanting to turn Britain into a republic. This is a constitutional change. This is not about the right of Israel to exist, and of course it's not about the right of the Israeli people to exist. Well, if you were to redraw the map... It's right what, to be an apartheid state, if you were to wave your magic, have. If you were to wave your magic wand and redraw the map, what would it look like? It's with? not about the map. I would have the whole thing as a one state with a democracy uh, and the state of all its inhabitants and all its citizens. This is not yeah. an anti-Semitic exactly. idea. Exactly. Is, is How that, is that anti Angela, is... Uh, Stephen, I'll be with you soon. Is that an anti-Semitic idea? What, to have to one... one state, everybody together, in a democracy? Is if, that... if it could work... Well, look, the, the, the Jews were conferred a Jewish homeland, OK? They, they... By whom? Oh. By whom? By Balfour the anti-Semite? The self-proclaimed anti-Semite? Balfour, anti the Balfour, anti the Balfour was... didn't want the Jews here, so we sent... You see, the there. problem is... OK, listen, Tony, listen, Tony, listen, the problem listen is... let's, let's, let's listen to, to Angela. Imagine... Imagine that you're listening to her like, on the radio and you're just listening to what she's got to say. Uh, yeah. and, Tony, you'd probably be shouting at the radio. I, I appreciate agree. that. <laughs> but I, but an, an, Angela, carry on. It's that, I mean, it's the kind of hysteria that absolutely knuckles any attempt to have a, a sensible debate. And well, I don't know why. Well like it, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what the debate is. We have to knuckle. You, you want to knuckle at freedom of expression. And all the things that you're saying. Less, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, less, 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 wait, less of the knuckle, finish your point. You're shouting over me, so you're not allowing me the freedom of expression. Oh, God, now, hang on a second. The thing is that for those of people who don't, haven't been to Israel, who haven't been to the West Bank, I've got family that live on the West Bank, I've been to the checkpoint. By what right? Shame. By what Shame. right do they live on the West Bank? They're colonizers. Oh. Oh. They are colonizers. You just said Listen, Israel was if it carries on like this, no I'm going to walk out and leave you all to it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Angela, there's a, there's a point. What rights have they got to be on the West Bank? In a calm way, answer the point that was uh, hollered from over there. Because, because the, the territory was a Acquired through war, through defensive action. Okay, we're getting nowhere. Territory. We're getting nowhere. Bishop, wait, can you I, know what? Nikki, Let's can I make the point? Well, if I may, all I was one going to say, all I was going to say is, my late mother fell ill while she was in Israel, visiting family that lived there. Her life was saved by an Israeli Arab hematologists and, and other Israelis on the medical team. There are Israeli Arabs who live very happily so under, is, under Israeli jurisdiction. Oh, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas subjugate the people but, of Gaza or, and use them as a political right, tool. Does your family have if to you, live in the West? Because right. nobody owns that land. Do 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 Bishop oh. Stephen oh. Lowe. Bishop Stephen. Well, uh, uh, Professor, you, you put yourself very much on my list. <laughs> <laughs> I, won't, I won't tell you what that list is. <laughs> Bishop Stephen Nikki, Lowe. what is so sad is that Jesus wept over Jerusalem and this conversation makes me want to weep because neither side is really communicating with the other. They're not listening to each other. They're actually stuck in their own worlds. And I find that quite frightening, really, because if you once get inside a box... 
and can't see out of the box, uh, you don't communicate between the boxes. They're both in, in boxes, shape. different boxes. And I feel at the moment they're in two different so boxes. Can I just yes. finish, please, now as well? Still interrupted. Um, what I want to say is that I personally believe passionately in the existence of Israel as a place uh, for the Jewish people to find as their homeland. But I have found it very difficult as a Christian to find myself defending that position and yet being accused of being anti-Semitic when I have criticised the Israeli government over some of the things that they have done. Have you been criticised? Oh, of yes. I have actually been taken to one side and spoken to quite seriously. By? I should uh, buy people with connections into the Jewish community in this city of Manchester. Uh, where I, I, I was for, for many years. So do you think it devalues, this is what we're debating, anti-Semitism, yeah. anti zionism do you think it devalues yes. the term anti-Semitism if yes, it is it, bandied it, about? Yes, it, it does indeed, 100%. because for me, I do not believe in any way I am anti-Semitic. Yeah. I have visited and, and been moved by the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. I have been there, I have been to kibbutz, I have got to know and have many Jewish friends. I, is insulting to me to be described as anti-Semitic when I criticise the Israeli government for some of the things that they have done. And we have to, in our society, draw a very clear line between the criticism of a government, wherever it is, and a prejudice against a people of a particular faith and religion. Thank and you. the sooner we stop doing that, the better. Amen. Welcome. Can I, can Welcome I to our merry throng. <laughs> Can I answer your question as uh, as Is as anti-Zionism anti-Semitic? Right. Anti-Semitism is being anti-Jewish. That means hating all Jews, which certainly from an Islamic perspective is strictly forbidden because racism is strictly forbidden. We are all the children of Adam and Eve. We are all one family, and to be Absolutely. racist towards each other is strictly forbidden. Anti-Zionism. Well, Zionism is is responsible for the ethnic cleansing of 800,000 Palestinians from 700 villages by the use of sheer terrorism, the terrorism of the Haganah, the Urgen, the Sterngang, the Palmach. These were terrorist groups that ethnically cleansed the land to make way for the Zionist region. And the Jews in Arab land in 1948? Oh, no, they left because of it. Okay, I'm Elman. Elman, Member of stop, Parliament shouting. for Liverpool Riverside. Liverpool yeah. uh, Riverside. Uh, I mean, please can everybody oh, stop oh, shouting oh, at each yeah. other um, across the floor? There is a serious political issue about national aspirations of Jewish people and Palestinian people that needs to be resolved by a negotiation which retains the Jewish state of Israel but also a state for all its citizens, a third of whom are not Jewish at all but have equal rights rights and a Palestinian state yes. set up alongside Israel given massive investment to make it a viable state with a good economy but until we get to that position we do have to find a way of talking to one another and one of the problems and is to do talk, with talk, demonizing talk, talk, one talk, side the reason that this hasn't been resolved cannot be put down to only one side and we can all find fault with leaders in Israel and leaders in the Palestinian Authority and the Palestinian side but when continually in debates on this subject it is only Israel who's criticized to the exclusion of criticism of the Palestinian leadership then that's starting to demonize what is in fact a complex and very tragic situation. Okay. So I think that's a problem. And I think that's one of the issues. I'm, I'm going to, there's that going to be, be ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be two more comments on this debate. And those uh, comments will come from uh, the uh, professor and also from Joy. And I want your, your comments to be short and concise. And uh, what's your, professor, what's your final thought on this my, question? My final thought is that this onslaught equating anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism is an attempt to prevent us from understanding the root of the problem. The, the reason colonization of the West Bank, the relatives of, of uh, my Antrim. colleague here, uh, is allowed to live contrary to the Geneva Conventions uh, in occupied territories is because Zionism from its beginning is a project of colonization of Palestine and making it into a Jewish majority or exclusively Jewish state. Thank you. And I think appropriately accounts to that from Joy, Joy Wolf from the Zionist Central Council. 
You have the last word. To I make totally it... disagree that Israel is about colonization. I believe anti Semitism. That, then. And anti Semitism. I do not believe that every anti Zionist comment is anti Semitic, <coughs> but unfortunately, a lot of anti Semitism is creep creeping in. And when we get remarks like, Israel doesn't want peace, but a peace. I would like to see when the Palestinians want peace. I want to see Abbas not saying that he will never make peace, not saying that he will never recognize the Jewish state, and not saying that no Jew would be allowed to live in the state of Palestine. He has said all those things. We've heard so many myths today. The one thing, talking about... Um, yes, there has been white phosphorus to light up the sky. To suggest that it's not fireworks. Excuse me. It turns me down on people. Excuse me. How dare you? How dare you, you suggest? How dare you? Burn children alive. What? How dare what? you justify that? You're like a Holocaust joy. Joy. denier. Joy, she's like. She, you're saying she's like a Holocaust denier. Yes, exactly. Joy, and joy, and joy, and joy, joy, joy. You burn Palestinian Joy, will have the last word. You're disgraceful. I'm going to give you ten seconds. Well, all I will say is that. I, I think the Palestinians have been the most misled people in history because they have had the opportunity of not being a refugee community for years and years and okay. years, and their leaders have failed Absolutely. them and prevented them. They've had masses of money that Thank has not been invested much. properly. Thank you all very much.